Good afternoon, yes. everyone. Uh, thank you all for finding the time to visit uh, today's webinar on R&D activities on SCO2 in Europe. Uh, and be welcome, please. Uh, my name is Sivka Spolcova and I work as a project officer at ETN Global, which is an international association covering the entire gas turbine value chain. And today I will talk you through this webinar. So first of all, I would like to explain to you why we are actually here. Well, quite a few months ago, um, we at ETN addressed several SCO2 related projects with the idea of uh, a joint activity and uh, all of them were in. So that was for us uh, very motivating and uh, because all of us felt that a free, easily accessible and yet very high quality event on this innovative technology is missing, we decided to organize this webinar. So. Therefore, you are witnessing today uh, the very first episode of this series that we tried quite hard to make uh, inspiring, engaging, relevant, and perhaps um, also a bit entertaining. So after I stop talking, which uh, I promise will be very soon, because I would like uh, soon to give the opportunity to the um, webinar to speak for itself, I would like to also pass the words to our first uh, guest speaker, Eric, Le Eric Lecomte from, from DG Energy. And then um, we will have a presentation block number one uh, with the topic solar. So um, this, this block will cover five projects. And after the projects, there will be a QA and a session for this block. So they will not be a QA and a session after every presentation, but it will be only after the whole block, so five presentations. And again, if you have a question, keep it for then or write it already in the chat. Then there will be a presentation block number two, which will cover the topic carbon-free non-renewable. And we have three presentations to explain this topic. And again, it will be covered by, um, by the QA session number two. And then we'll conclude. We also vote for the next uh, next topic for the um, for the next uh, uh, next webinar, uh, which will be held in about two or three months, because it's up to you to choose what you want to hear about next time. Um, so now it's the time to introduce to you the first uh, speaker, uh, Eric Lecomte, uh, who is a policy officer at the European Commission's DG Energy already since 2015, and he is in charge, among others, of energy efficiency and transition to carbon neutrality in industry. I will stop sharing my screen. Yes. OK, all right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. yes can. Uh, and you can hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. OK, all right. So uh, I will uh, and now it is maybe full screen. Yes. OK, all right. So uh, I think because of the situation, I cannot avoid talking a bit about the uh, recent policy development. So indeed, uh, you all know that the, the, the gas price uh, is rocketing. It was around 10, 20 euro per megawatt hour in 2020 around 40 in 2021, so already rising uh, before the, 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 the invasion in Ukraine, and it is now well be above uh, 100 euro per, per megawatt hour. And the, the future, so the one year red, so what is the price that the market thinks the, will be in one year time? Uh, in August 21, the, the orange curve showed it, it should be low, uh, but already on the 6th of March, the dotted red line, you see it was already higher, but expected to, to go down afterwards. And that was already uh, just after the, the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and now the, 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 the black line dates from the 20th of September. So the uh, price is expected to stay around 200 euro for uh, another year. Uh, and even in 2025, the target price seems to be 75 euros. So it's definitely uh, higher than what it was uh, and, uh, uh, a couple of months or years ago. Uh, and so for electricity, the, the prices have, have followed. 
uh, and you see that the various countries, the, the internal market worked because the, the, the prices are rather uh, uniform across the, the countries. Uh, but what is uh, a problem is also that nuclear was uh, very low. You see the, the production in France around 20 gigawatt compared to 40 gigawatt the, the previous years uh, no, normally. Uh, and also the production of hydroelectric has, has been much lower because of the drought. So that also explains why very often uh, many hours uh, it's the gas that is needed to, to produce electricity and so the, the electricity of price at that time is dictated by, by gas. And so the, the measures taken by uh, EU uh, so after the invasion in Ukraine in February, already in March, the Commission made a proposal for increased preparedness. Uh, and so to reduce the gas demand and also replenish the gas storage. And so we have reached, we have overpassed the, the, the objective of 80% filling by the 1st of November 2022, as we are already at 82%. Also diversifying away from uh, Russian fossil fuel imports and uh, and this is sort of medium long term investment in your renewables in the EU with the repower EU uh, plan. And so really renewables are, are cheap and uh, they increase they increase our independence from the imports. Uh, this is our in energy insurance. That is the way we we need to go because if uh, renewables are abundant, uh, and cover the, the, the consumption, then uh, no need for, for gas at that time, and so the price will be lower. So, uh, and more recently, uh, a, a new set of proposals was proposed in September, so uh, just uh, weeks ago. So, uh, coordinated uh, electricity demand reduction, so reducing the, the demand, uh, which was proposed, proposing also a cap for the revenues of inframarginal electricity producers. So these are the, the electricity producers whose cost of production is, is much lower than the exercise price, than the, than the market price. And also a solidarity contribution from fossil fuel companies, extra profits. So all of that has been proposed. And there is ongoing work to uh, improve liquidity in the uh, supply, uh, electricity supply, and also uh, a longer term uh, reform uh, of the uh, electricity market. And so the, the, the first measure that you see uh, uh, on the left is indeed reducing the, the electricity com consumption, uh, and especially during the peak hours that is mandatory to be reduced by 5% because if you shave the peak hours, that reduces the hours when the gas will define the, 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 the price of electricity. And so uh, in industry, the idea is to get rid of coal, oil and gas, uh, to go for cleaner uh, sources. Uh, and so it's, uh, as you see on, on the bottom left, uh, it's about electrification of the industry, uh, using uh, hydrogen, using producing more bio-based uh, fuel, fuels like biogas and improving energy efficiency and all those ones that are circled in red uh, are important for your sector of uh, supercritical co2 cycles to increase the energy efficiency uh, recover heat from uh, industry and convert back to electricity and so in the end uh, reducing the need to, to produce electricity, notably from gas. So all you do uh, presently into developing, uh, demonstrating, but also uh, as quickly as possible, deploy of all your technologies. This is all very needed. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you very much, Ari, for this relevant information. Uh, I think we couldn't have wished for a better speaker uh, for the beginning of this session today. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present my colleagues now um, that will present to you these presentations. And they are all very inspiring people. And honestly, I'm quite honored, honored to call them my colleagues. 
anyway, we are in a very good company, so I think that there are things that we can really look forward to. So um, I will ask my colleague uh, Andreas uh, to, um, to switch presentations. I'll stop sharing. And I would like to tell you that uh, Dr. Andrea Sega is the leader of the thermal power machinery and plants in Technical University Dresden, Faculty of Mechanical Science and Engineering, Institute of Power Engineering. So Andreas, it's over to you. Thank you, Jitka. Um, does everybody see my presentation and uh, hear me? Yes, yes. Loud and clear. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. So. It's my pleasure to uh, show you the proje project Carbo Solar, which we are working on. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to start with my presentation structure. So I want to give a short project summary, show the objectives and expected impact of this project, show you the scope, uh, talk about the main results of our work packages and the outcomes, and uh, then show you some options for exploitation, collaboration and follow-up activities. So um, this is our project summary. We are funded by the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action uh, by a German local funding uh, um, institution. And our budget are 2.2 million euros. Our project runs for 42 months and it started in October 2019 and will finish in March 2023, so next year. The start TIL of our project was about three and we will end up at four maybe a little bit into the five. The partners of this uh, project are we, so the TU Dresden, the Helmut Center Dresden Rossendorf, Siemens, and the German Aerospace Center. This is a brief overview over our project structure. So we started off with a potential study. Um, in this potential study, Siemens uh, was mainly concerned about the use case for waste heat recovery and did a thermoeconomic optimization, which uh, we also worked on by um, designing heat exchanges. On the other hand, the DLR, so the German Aerospace Center, looked into the use case for concentrated solar power and did a thermoeconomic optimization for this case. And out of these studies, we derived um, promising process architectures and defined parameters, did integral optimization, and specified requirements uh, for the components and uh, looked into the products. So we looked into the um, heater, into the cooler, into the recuperator, and we also looked into the compressor for, for these processes. Then, uh, based on this outcome, uh, we uh, jumped into the technology development, and our part in this was methodology development, uh, especially for thermoeconomic optimization and for design of uh, products, so uh, of components. And the part of the Helmut Center Dresden Rosendorf is to build up the modular test facility, which I will also show you a little bit later in a little bit more detail, with the fin uh, final goal for validating the SU2 technology on a relatively large scale. So on this slide, you see our targeted uh, temperature range. Um, so we, as I already mentioned, we uh, want to go into this direction of weight heat, waste heat recovery and uh, concentrated solar power, which brings us to the scope of our project. Um, the One of the main goals is that we want to set up um, a SU2 facility as a demonstrator in the megawatt uh, class, uh, which is built up at Helmut Center Dresden Rossendorf. And uh, we also did technology development. So we looked into the components, we looked in potential problems that the components might have, for example, the recuperator or the cooler or the compressor as already said. We also not only looked at static calculations, but we also looked at transient um, 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 systems so we looked uh, how the system would behave when it's heated up because usually you say for su 2 systems that one of the main advantages is that they can quickly start and quickly be shut down um, and then we also looked into process reliability and safety on this level we also did some generic investigations for example we looked into the fluid composition because fluid composition also plays a major role especially in this technology if you have slight impurities in your co2 um, that might shift your thermodynamic properties already quite by a bit. 
And so um, it plays a role which uh, impurities you have or which additives you might want to use. That is also something which we looked into. Um, we also did heat transfer calculations by 1D modeling and also by 3D CFD models. And we looked into the stability of the entire process because usually you want to um, compress close to the critical point. And then it is quite um, important that you stabilize your point, your, your um, inlet point of the compressor, because in the proximity of the critical point, your properties change uh, quite drastically if you are a little bit off by temperature or pressure. And then we also looked into failure models and uh, effect analysis. So our targeted parameters for our SIP facility are listed here. What we are uh, what we want to achieve are maximum temperatures of 600 degrees Celsius, 300 bars, and uh, heat fluxes of up to 2.5 megawatts. So already quite large scale demonstrator, which we are currently building up. I want to quickly come to the main results and outcomes uh, of our project. So first of all, you see here the use case for waste heat recovery, where we investi investigated different project uh, uh, process architectures we optimized these project ar architectures um, and looked, for example, this is just an example given here on the equipment cost uh, plotted over the net power. And what you can see here are all different cases with different uh, equipment costs and all different net power. And what you see here is a Pareto front, so the optimal points, let's say. And what you can see from this uh, figure, which is also outcome of this project, is that not necessarily at the largest net power, you will achieve also the optimal operating point of uh, SCO2 power plants, because there might be points which have a little less net power, but are better cost-wise. Then um, we also looked um, in a different other working uh, work packages on the use case of concentrated solar power that was mainly done by the German Aerospace Center where they investigated, um, for example, the scenarios where you use bauxite particles for heat uh, transfer, so for storing heat, and where they calculated and optimized the levelized cost of electricity based on various designs and looked on um, optimal points for, um, yeah, for designing such processes. Then, um, we also, for example, looked into CO2 compressors because it was surprisingly difficult to find uh, a supplier of a CO2 compressor. So in, within this project, we also designed uh, an own compressor, did CFD and FEM calculations, uh, evaluated many designs uh, where we, in the end, found two compressors, which are promising. Um, and uh, finally, um, what I also want to show you is this modular test facility, which we are building up. Um, right now, we almost have all components together. The one missing component is indeed uh, the compressor, which we are still waiting for, but uh, hopefully we, it will be shipped very soon. And as soon as the compressor is, um, uh, has arrived at Helmholtz Center Dresden Rosendorf, we can start the assembly of all of the components so, so that we will hopefully put the um, um, facility in operation beginning of 2020. Three. Okay, I'm, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think you will have to conclude. Ah, okay. Uh, so um, my that that's all, almost all. So follow-up activities. Um, that are some projects which uh, we applied for, which will hopefully come, and which uh, may be um, starting and going to the direction of SCO2 uh, in the near future. And uh, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me or ask any questions in the Q&A session. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thanks. <laughs> um, well, the next project that uh, we will hear about is uh, Compass SCO2, and it's uh, Daniel Benitez who's coming to present it. Um, Daniel is a mechanical engineer from Venezuela with a master in energy systems from University of Applied Sciences Aachen in Germany. He has been working at the German Aerospace Center DLR for 10 years at the Institute of Solar Research. And currently he's coordinating the Horizon 2020 project Compass SU2 about which you will hear uh, about in a second. Over to you, Daniel. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? And 
the presentation. I'm not sure right now. Can you see my presentation now, right? Now? Yes, yes, now I can. Yeah. Okay, I'll go yes, back. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so yes, I will present this project composite CO2, which stands for Components and Materials Performance for Advanced Solar Supercritical CO2 Power Plants. It's a long name, but you will understand now what we're doing. It's the same project structure I've shown by the colleague before. So going into the summary of a project, it's a Horizon 2020 funded project under the topic of novel high performance materials and components. It has a budget of almost 6 million euros uh, with a duration of four years, started in November 2020. And the main components start from TRL2 and should end at TRL5. Um, we have 12 partners from Europe. Um, they are listed here. I will not go through each of the names due to the time restriction. We have. Uh, as for the objectives in this project, uh, we have, let's say, two key uh, lines. This one is to develop highly and durable efficient particles for CSP plants. Uh, and the other part is to develop uh, structural materials for heat exchanger tubes, which can be used in the, in the CO2 application. Then we will work on a demonstration of a material lifetime, which is a key aspect by measuring and modeling the degradation of these materials. Also design, construct and operate a particle and a CO2 heat exchanger, which is a key component in this project in order to validate the models. And finally, evaluate the economic benefits of such a system uh, compared to a state of the art molten salt CSP plant. Uh, for the impact, uh, we expect, as some of you already commented on the, on the, on the survey, uh, in increased efficiency of the system, mainly due to the Brighton cycle with high temperature SO2 compared to, to molten salt power plants. We expect to reduce the, the CO2 emissions by 100% if we replace a, power, a fossil fuel power plant with this type of plants and to increase the life service, service life of the particles or the yeah, heat collecting elements compared to the current absorber coatings used on molten salt receivers. So as for the system and the scope in this project, uh, as I mentioned before, we're trying to integrate uh, two innovative systems. One is a CSP plant with a particle system, which has not been um, used commercially yet, but it's a very, very promising technology, which is so use solid particles as a heat carrying uh, medium and also as a storage medium directly. And these particles can get uh, up to 1000 degrees in the current, in current status that we have. We want to integrate it into the Brighton supercritical CO2 um, cycle. For this reason, we have the, the key component, the heat exchanger connecting them, which uh, is under extreme conditions, as I will show in the next slide, but mainly due to the high temperature and, and high pressure. We have a, a around 250 bars on the CO2 side and over 700 degrees on the CO2 side, and as I said, 900 degrees on the particles. Okay. Um, yes, as for the results that we have been obtaining, uh, at the beginning we designed the, the solar field and the, the solar plant, mainly the, the receiver also, to, to work with this media. Uh, other partners, the industrial partners, work on the design of the heat exchanger, um, which is a moving bed heat exchanger with particles on the outside and the supercritical CO2 on the inside of the tubes. And we work also on the optimization of the power block um, looking at the efficiency mainly, uh, the, the cost, the LCOE is not a priority in this project uh, due to the low TRL, so we focus on the highest efficiency. We have provided uh, some two public deliverables can be found on our website um, um, regarding these uh, results I just mentioned. Then uh, other partners have been working on the development of particles. Until now, the power plants, the CSP power plants that have been, let's say, researched, uh, use uh, mainly propants coming from the fracking industry. But on the one side, they are not optimized for, for CSP. We measure some degradation on their, on their properties. And also, many companies uh, stop the production. So we look for alternatives better suited for CSP application. Therefore, uh, the partner mainly Sangoban has been working on the development of of particles and there is one line that seems to be very promising um, due to the optical performance, the durability and also the cost. Um, but we're working on this. There is also publication um, about the current status of the development testing of particles you can find. Um, then regarding the tubes, uh, 
Yeah, several partners work first on identifying the state of the art steels and nickel based alloys that can be selected for this application in order to have a benchmark. They were uh, characterized and the partner University of Birmingham has been working on the development of novel chromium nickel alloys and nickel aluminum alloys, um, also now adding uh, iron to it, uh, which can sustain uh, temperatures above 1000 degrees C and also in the corrosive environment and yeah, this kind of harsh condition. And the, the partner Deshema is working in the chromium base uh, with silicide intermetallic alloys, also a, a novel development of materials, or also there are developing coatings with this material to be applied on, on conventional iron or nickel based materials. Um, we also have uh, important tasks regarding the modeling of, uh, of the materials and the, their yeah. degradation. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, well, uh, there is also the work being done on the inter interaction between particles, metal, and CO2. There are several tests like creep tests with air and CO2, uh, corrosion tests with uh, both air and CO2 at high temperatures. Also, cyclic oxidation is very rele relevant for CSP due to the um, frequent shut up and shut down. Um, and some other similar tests, I mean, also corrosion. And we're working on ero erosion test. Um, I will appreciate if everyone mutes the microphone. There's some noise in the background. Um, furthermore, also simulation is being done and modeling of, of this interaction. Daniel, you've been muted, I'm sorry. Hello, can you hear me again? <laughs> yes, Hello? you're back. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Nika was very efficient muting everyone, but included me. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I, I, I hope you, I think it was around here. So I just mentioned, okay, you can read it. We're, we're on what of your work regarding the interaction of particle metals and the CO2. And I was mentioning that a partner who is also presenting another project today, CVR, Czech Republic, is working on the pilot testing of heat exchanger. Currently, uh, they're testing the cold, uh, let's say, version of it without CO2, mainly to uh, evaluate the, the flow field and support for the design of a heat exchanger to improve. This is very challenging to have a high transfer coefficient using solid particles. So this key challenge will be evaluated. And finally, to finish my presentation, uh, some of the topics uh, that we have identified, which can be a connecting point with other projects or other stakeholders are the optimized Brighton cycles that we have been uh, and other projects also have identified. Uh, the particles that we are developing can be used also for other processes, not only for this supercritical CO2, but, but other industrial processes at high temperature. Um, then the structural materials uh, that can work for harsh conditions regarding temperature, pressure, erosion, oxidation, corrosion or thermal cycling um, can be used also in other uh, processes. And the modeling and testing results are very interesting and useful and can be also shared. And we also expect to have uh, some scientific publication jointly with other similar projects or as well as participate in dissemination events like this one right now. And finally, we have several channels of communication. We have a Twitter, LinkedIn account, the website, and Zenodo for sharing public results as well as here you find the, our email accounts and also of, um, our partner for the dissemination communication in case you need any more information. So thanks a lot. I hope I was under the time. Finish. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. Congratulations. So you, you made it in time and apologies for muting you. No problem. Thank you. Um, uh, and the next project that you will hear about is, uh, is Carabeus. And it's uh, David Sanchez who is coming uh, uh, who's coming to tell you more about it. David is a mechanical engineer by education and has a PhD on energy engineering awarded by University of Seville. He's currently a professor of energy engineering at this institution where he leads a team working on sustainable technologies for power generation and for the water energy nexus. David, the floor is yours. Thank you. You are muted. Yes, sorry, I was on mute. Exactly. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot, Ditka, for that. And uh, thanks everyone for attending. So, 
Scarabaeus is about uh, considering subcritical CO2 cycles uh, working not with pure CO2, but with uh, CO2 mixtures. And uh, I'll uh, comment on the reason why uh, in a minute. So this is the structure of my talk, uh, quite similar to the previous ones. Uh, just in a nutshell, this is a research and innovation action, 5 million euro project uh, starting April 2019, uh, expected or forcing uh, and the March 2023, probably a little bit later, as you know, uh, all projects involved in experimental activities due to the uh, difficulty in finding some of the components and materials being delayed. Start in TRL is four and in TRL is six. Uh, the project is coordinated by Politecnico di Milano in Italy. Uh, Politecnico and University of Brescia are working on the identification of dopants and mixtures. Then we have Kelvium in France and TUVN in Austria working on heat transfer and heat transfer equipment. We have City University and Baker Hughes in the UK and Italy respectively working on turbo machinery. Quantis in Switzerland is working on LCA and Abengoa and University of Seville in Spain, both of them working on system integration. So uh, the objective of this project is to demonstrate that using these uh, CO2 mixtures, it is possible to reduce capex and opex in a concentrated solar power plant by 30 and 35% respectively, which translates into a 30% lower LCOE, so the cost of electricity, than state-of-the-art technology. Now, that is going to be demonstrated conceptually, of course, uh, but for the instrumental feature of the project, which is the mixture that we are going to use, we want to demonstrate that experimentally as well. Uh, we are going to do that at a relevant scale, which is 300 thermal kilowatt, that is the thermal rate you know, for experimental facility in Austria, and for 300 hours, also for the reasons that I will uh, talk about in a minute. If you see the picture here, you can also see where these capex and opex reductions are coming from. As far as scope, uh, you can see here that we are working in different areas. So uh, where I'm now uh, marking with my uh, pointer, the, the key uh, feature of the project is, um, let's say, so critical CO2 systems are nice and cycles are nice as long as you can get close to the critical point and therefore exploit the very high density of the working fluid in the compression process. Now, if you are in a CSP power plant, it is very likely that you cannot get to those low temperatures and therefore it is difficult to take advantage of those features. So that is why we have considered that maybe if we add certain dopants to CO2 and we are able to shift the critical point to a higher temperature, then we can still have condensation in the cycle uh, or even get close to the critical point, therefore have the, the liquid-like behavior of the working fluid. And that is what Scarabaeus is all about. And that is what you can see here. This is the temperature entropy diagram, so the saturation line for pure CO2. And this is for one of the reference mixtures that we are considering. If you are able to go down to 50 degrees C, then you can have condensation. Therefore, you can enhance performance. We've also mentioned that we are going to have more compact turbo machinery and less complexity in the cycle layout fewer component count or smaller, lower component count translates into lower cost. So this is uh, the way we work. Uh, we start with uh, uh, raw CO2, so pure CO2, critical pressure and critical temperature well known by all of us. If we add different dopants in different quantities, either sulfur dioxide, benzene, titanium tetrachloride, these are some of the dopants we are currently considering. We can change critical temperatures. So if we increase ambient temperature, we are still able to accomplish our objective. Once we identify the optimum uh, mixture, and there is not a universal optimum mixture, because we can tune our mixture and tailor it to the particular location of the power plant, then we produce these pressure temperatures, saturation line diagrams, based on experimental results. And this is what you've got in the next slide. Now, of course, we are focusing on the low temperature end of the cycle, but then we have to make sure that this thing still works in the high temperature end. And that essentially means that the working mixture is thermally stable and does not degrade at high temperature. This is a thermal stability test uh, that you can see here, and this is the apparatus that you need to perform that uh, uh, experiment at the University of Brescia. 
So you can see here pretty much all experimental values stick to the expected behavior unless you go up to about 650 degrees C, in which case you depart from the expected line, meaning that you are degrading in the flow. Now, also, uh, as far as the cycle goes, uh, what you can see here is thermal efficiency, specific work, therefore compactness, and uh, temperature rise across primary heat exchanger, therefore how much you are able to take advantage of uh, the thermonic storage system or reduce the inventory of working fluid in some particular subsystem when you are considering different cycle layouts, as you can see here, and uh, mixtures. So you can see there is this quite a bit of, of an impact on uh, the cycle layout or the cycle that is of most interest to you, depending on the dopant that you are using and the parameter that you are looking at. So uh, that is something that we have to be able to identify and we're actually identifying within the scope of the project. Components are concerned. Here you can see uh, on this part of the slide the impact that change in the composition of the working fluid is going to have on your turbo machinery, in particular your turbine. This is four different turbines uh, for four different compositions. As you can see, they look quite differently. For our reference case, it is a 100 megawatt power plant. This is what we are getting right now. For a reference case, it is a full steam stage axial turbine. Now, heat exchangers, we're also doing uh, work, uh, a lot of work on heat exchangers and experimental work. Here you can see our uh, reference condensed geometry. This is the condensed tube, and this is the improved design with internal fins and groovy fins on the outside. And this is how the uh, experimental condenser that we are going to test looks like. Now, by using this particular geometry, what you can see here is that with respect to the uh, standard condenser with uh, standard fins and smooth walls on the inside, this is the theoretical Nusselt number, this is the experimental one, this is the reference geometry, this is the improved geometry. You can see that we are able to enhance the performance, at least theoretically, quite significantly. The next step is to demonstrate that experimentally. And all that experimental activity is going to be carried out at the Technical University of Vienna. This is how the uh, rig looks like um, on the picture. It, it started off with a previous project of theirs and we've expanded uh, the facility. And there is, I hate saying that, but uh, you will have to conclude. Yeah, this is the last Thank slide. You. Thank you, Jitka. So this is just some opportunities for collaboration. The synergy with the previous one compasses CO2 are evident in terms of high temperature receivers and components. And uh, the synergy with the following one, desalination will be self-explanatory itself when we uh, move into the next presentation. Include uh, Professor Gianpaolo Manzolini is the coordinator at Politecnico di Milano and I'm serving as the dissemination coordinator. So check out our website, check out our LinkedIn account We'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you, Dilke. Thank you very much, David. It was very interesting. And while you said it already yourself, there is a project that um, that has um, Scarabeus as a basis, and it's a desalination. So um, uh, it's uh, Gianpaolo Manzolini who's coming to present this project. Uh, Gianpaolo is a full professor of energy and environmental systems at the School of Industry Engineering at Politecnico di Milano. He is the coordinator of a couple of EU-funded projects and one of them being uh, particularly desalination. Over to you, Gianpaolo. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Thank you all for attending this event. Uh, as introduced, uh, my name is Gianpaolo Manzolini. I have the privilege to be the coordinator of the desalination project which I'm going to present to you in the next couple of slides. So the... Gianpaolo, excuse me, can you please share it in the presentation mode? Yeah, it should be in presentation mode. Try it again. No, we don't see it at all. Yep. Is it okay now? Are we... No. We see all the other slides um, on the yeah. site. You should share the other monitor. That's yeah. what I have done. You have the option to share the other monitor and it should work. Is it okay now? 
No, still PowerPoint, what mm. you can see. Good try. Yes. Okay. This is okay. perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for the problems. Um, so the structure of this presentation is the same as the others. Uh, however, respect to other projects, this renation almost uh, just started, so it's uh, one year old. So we don't have as many results as the other projects. In addition, uh, this project was financed by the European Commission, and it is in collaboration with the Gulf Cooperation Council. That's why out of the uh, 14.5 14 million euro project, around 10 comes from European Commission, and the remaining is covered by the industrial partners for around 3.5 million and 1 million from the uh, partners from the Gulf countries. Moving to the partnership, uh, we have uh, a lot of universities because uh, in particular uh, a lot of technology has been developed and free comes from the Gulf countries and the rest from Europe. Then we have uh, three small medium enterprises, uh, two research institute uh, and three large companies. So why the solination? The name uh, it doesn't sound like a, a CO2 uh, project. The reason being that the solination would develop and demonstrate a two megawatt electric power cycle based on CO2 blend. So the same technology that uh, David just introduced, but it is coupled with a desalination process. We started with Scarabeus and then with the solination, we try to take the CO2 blend concept from the TRL6 down to TRL7 with this power. The idea is to demonstrate the CO2 blend concept in Saudi Arabia at a relevant size, to increase the thermal to electric conversion efficiency with respect to both conventional steam cycle and pure CO2 cycle, and this is what David just presented, and also reduce the power block specific cost against, again, conventional steam cycle and poor superficial CO2 cycle. As stated, the main activity in the first year was focused on designing the demo plant, the demo concept. This is what is going to be built in the upcoming years within the solination. It is a simple recuperative cycle where you have the pump because the idea is that the CO2, thanks to the adoption of the blend, is in liquid phase at the inlet. It's compressed, it goes through a recuperator, a primary tech changer. We have a boiler to heat up the, uh, the fluid, a molten salt boiler to be representative of a CSP application. Then we have a maximum temperature of 550 degrees C and a pressure around 220. And finally, against uh, it goes through the recuperator for being cooled down. The minimum temperature is set by the desalination part. So in this particular case, we are operating with quite high uh, minimum operating temperature in the range of 65 degrees C. As you can see from this picture, we have two different systems to uh, reject the condensed heat. One is a dry cooler to decouple the power cycle from the desalination part, just in case something not, is not working, but also because the waste heat recovery tech changer is designed for the desalination part, which is significantly smaller. What's new? We are going to design and manufacture an axial turbine to be representative of a large scale plant. And we have two heat exchanges made by additive manufacturer to make sure that the um, it exchanger is made with the highest surface to volume ratio ratio at the lowest price possible. Overall, we aim to demonstrate it for 2000 hours for design efficiency above 30%. So this is what we are on, working on designing the, uh, the demo plant and uh, the other outcome which we expect in the upcoming years is to identify the CO2 blend which optimizes the cycle within the operating temperature range. One of the main differences between Scarabeus is that we work at a higher minimum temperature because of the coupling with the desalination part. Select the most suitable material for the considered working fluid and operating conditions. David showed that uh, thermal stability of the fluid is relevant, but also the compatibility of, with typical material of uh, CO2. In our experience, sometimes blend are more aggressive, so uh, the adoption of more expensive material is necessary, and a compromise between the two is mandatory. 
determine the optimal effect exchanger design, adopting the innovative manufacturing procedure, and finally designing a 100 megawatt cycle for a CSP application. Remember, desalination should be coupled with solar energy and so CSP. What can be opportunities for exploitation collaboration? Certainly the first one is about modeling. We don't want to have uh, the higher efficiency of the supercritical two cycle with blends because of the modeling, but because of the higher thermodynamic characteristics. So we will be happy to benchmark the performance against other cases. Material compatibility testing is something quite relevant and we found very relevant for this kind of application, as well as the transfers measurement because we are not working with a pure fluid, but with innovative blend. Some synergies might be found also within the demonstration plant. That's all from my side. Thank you for attention. This is the desalination team which met physically for the first time in June, and here are all the contacts. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gian Paolo. Congratulations for keeping the time. Um, and the next project uh, will be presented by uh, Rafael Guedes. Uh, it will be Solar School project. Uh, Dr. Rafael Guedes is a senior researcher at the Division of Heat and Power in PTH Royal Institute of Technology. He has over 10 years of experience from academia and industry in relation to thermal power, solar energy and energy storage technologies. So it's over to you, Rafael. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you, Jika. And um, so uh, thanks everyone for being here today. I'll introduce our project, which is um, which acronym is Solar School, but it actually stands for uh, solar based supercritical CO2 operating low cost plants. And the, the structure is pretty much the same as the, my previous colleague's structure. So I'll jump onto it directly. Um, to summarize the project, the project uh, was funded uh, by the Horizon 2020 program. The total costs are a big question, to be honest, but uh, approximately 16 million or so, out of which uh, we have 10 million euro grant uh, from the grant agreement. Uh, the project is to last 48 months and it initially started in October 2020. But uh, in April this year, we suspended it given the rise in material cost since we were about to start procurement and we didn't know exactly what was going to happen with the budget we had. So, And now we are uh, about to open the suspension again. So we hopefully we hope to hear from the commission within this month already even. So next week, I hope. Uh, the idea of the project is to bring technologies to TL7 and I'll go more in detail there. Um, and we are a consortium uh, of 15 partners. And you see some of them here, or most of them here, or all of them here, <laughs> um, where it's a very big mix between industry and uh, academia. We have uh, industrial partners that lead all, or have expertise on the CSP side, like Abengoa, Mactel, and Massen, and, and partners that are on the tubo machinery side interested in demonstrating the supercritical CO2, like Franco Tosi Mechanica, Baker Hughes, as well as partners on the control side, like Mass um, and well, dissemination, et cetera. Uh, we have three main objectives, uh, although we have many more specific ones, but I'll just try to summarize here. So I think that the first and foremost objective of this project is to demonstrate uh, at a megawatt scale a supercritical C2 cycle that operates from molten salts uh, in Europe. Uh, and this cycle, uh, according to our objectives, is a two megawatt scale and it's a simple recuperated cycle. Um, in doing so, of course, we want to demonstrate new designs for tubal machinery and respective heat exchangers. Besides this, uh, we firmly, firmly believe in uh, hybridization as the concept, so hybridization of solar thermal and photovoltaics. And one way to do it is to integrate directly molten solar electrical heaters. So the project also aims to demonstrate a megawatt scale molten solar electrical heater. And last but not least, uh, many of the activities are related to modeling, of course, uh, techno-economic, but also environmental investigations in relation to hybrid systems. Um, our vision as a consortium is that in the future, uh, you might have hybrid plants like the one I showed here on the, on, the, on the left, where you have a CSP plant that it's in this case using the conventional, let's say commercial molten salt uh, two tank system, a tower, uh, driving up supercritical CO2 cycle in this case, but it's, um, let's say, in su supported or in operation in a smart way together with a PV field that is able to inject power or convert it into heat by, uh, and store it by means of this electrical heater. 
why we look into this, it's more or less also then looked into into the right figure, which I'm glad Andreas introduced the whole Pareto optimality earlier. Basically, what we have here is some Pareto optimal uh, fronts where you see um, how these configurations we are looking, which are the the orange circle, optimal configure optimal hybrid PVCSP using molten salt, can be more cost effective than today's state of the art CSP, and be of course more costly than a only PV plant, but considerably more capacity factor, more rich, higher capacity factors. And this is for allocation in, in, in South of Europe. The demonstration plants are uh, were initially to be performed in Spain, in the South of Spain, in a plant uh, like you see here in this slide. Uh, unfortunately, early in the project, we realized that uh, these plants were, uh, were not able to be realized because uh, the plant changed in ownership. So we decided to look into new sites and um, discuss in, during the commission different alternatives. At the moment, and that's also part of the suspension or we decided to suspend, it's uh, we looked into different sites and one of the sites we are um, investigating and we believe has a good potential and we are in this discussions with the commission is uh, to do it at the, at the um, Evera Molten Salt platform, which is in, in Portugal and it's led or managed by the University of Evora and the DLR. Uh, in this way, we will use an existing facility that operates with molten salts and actually has molten salt trough technology with a two tank system. And we will integrate then, as you can see in the slide, well, the rest, the other components. So an electrical heater, the molten salt heater to supercritical CO2, and the simple recuperated cycle, as mentioned earlier. Um, what we have achieved so far in the first 18 months, so just a reminder, we, we, we suspended in April. Um, it's basically the main, the main design of the cycle we want to aim for. So here you see some key parameters. Um, it's super critical, but we're not aiming for the highest or more challenging conditions. Um, at the same time, this, this design uh, was decided also from the manufacturers and suppliers as a compromise such that it could be scale up, but without being too costly for, for the consortium as a whole. And we think that the designs achieved are such that, okay, for the demonstration plan, we'll probably reach around a nominal efficiency that is just around 22% or slightly less. But that same configuration can be scaled up, when scale up can reach um, efficiencies of above 30% up to when it's a 10 megawatt or above or close to 50% when it's a 100 megawatt and reheated. Some examples of the design, I don't have the time to go into details, but uh, both Frank Tosi have been taking care of the, the design of the turbine, which is a three-stage machine. And you see here a 3D axisymmetric view um, of the compressor. We have a, a view as well here on the right, that which is led by Baker Hughes. There's also a three-stage centrifugal. Uh, the turbine is a two actual one and one centrifugal, as you can see. Same for the molten salt uh, to supercritical CO2 heat exchanger, which is one of the cri critical components in our system as well. So that's led by Lointech. And we have come to a specific design that we believe works for our case and it's scalable to even times 10 in terms of megawatts thermal. So in summary, um, Solar School is a four year project. We are 15 partners, might welcome two in the, if the one's open in this project again. Our total budget is approximately 15 million or 16, uh, out of which we have a 10 million euro grant. Our main goal is to demonstrate a two megawatt supercritical CO2 cycle, a megawatt electrical heater or megawatt scale electrical heater to enable hybrid plants in the future, in the near term future, using state of the art CSP technology. Um, what we have achieved so far is all the conceptualization, a lot of techno-economic analysis, and all the demonstration pre-engineering work and the component design, meaning the, tur the turbine, the compressor, and the heat exchangers. Uh, we're at the moment, as I said, suspended, and our first challenge is to well, agree on, uh, together with the commission and internally, on that the new site is uh, viable. And uh, just as a recap of our main conditions in the cycle, it's uh, 565 degrees Celsius, roughly 186 bar, and um, our inlet of the compressor is 33 Celsius and 83 bar. Um, to a machinery design was well, scalable, like I said, um, at the on this on the and at the moment or at the time of the suspension, our main idea was or our focus was on the CFD and optimization analysis for the heat exchanger and the heaters involved in the consortium. In terms of collaboration, as just as my colleagues before, I think there is a lot of synergies that we can have with different parties in relation to modeling uh, and benchmarking our hybrid analysis. 
as well as in uh, sharing high fidelity CFD and FEM um, tools or analysis when it comes to multi surgical heater design or even the heat exchangers we are developing. And another challenge is well testing or modeling of material degradation, which uh, I didn't talk about, but of course we have looked into a lot into it when choosing which materials to go for in the design of the components. Well, uh, thank you before finishing here. You have the main contacts uh, well, of the project and then also the dissemination manager and myself uh, in the project coordination. And we hope to resume the project before end of the year or, the, or at latest January. So uh, hopefully you can hear more from us. We have still a few participants typing. So we'll allow a few more moments and then I, I will ask my colleagues to briefly comment if this is something that you have maybe expected. I can answer this is actually the quest, the answer I was expecting. Exactly. Demonstration of technology is the next step and something that is needed to take the technology forward. What large companies need is uh, having uh, a test case reliable which operates. Rafael? Okay, thank you. No, I was going to say the same. I think that's well, like in, like in the Solination or in Solar School, I think it's paramount that the whole demonstration well works or that we learn from it. So that's that's the whole point uh, to see what, what is going to happen. So. Okay, so it's interesting. Thank you very much for uh, to everyone who participated in, in this uh, small question. And um, I think we are ready to move to the second block, uh, which is covering the topic carbon free non, -renew non renewable. And uh, we'll hear about three projects about uh, cool heat, about SU2 effect, and SU2 for MPP. So uh, for the first project, Cool Heat, uh, it's my colleague from ETN, uh, René Weigen, who is coming to, to the stage to present it. Uh, Dr. René Weigen is a senior technical manager at ETN Global, and he's responsible for the management and coordination of ongoing and future ETN projects, among which is particular, particularly Cool Heat. Uh, before coming to ETN, he worked as a head of Sulter's gas turbine services in the region of Europe, the Middle East and Africa. So, Renato, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yetka, for the uh, kind in, uh, introduction. Do you hear me well? Yes, I do. Okay, let's try now to share my screen. Mach, nimm. Do you see? Hmm? Yes. Yes, yes. Even, even. Oh, you have somebody, there's somebody which is trying to do something else. Okay, yeah, maybe you can mute his, his mic. Okay, so my name is René Vege and I'm the coordinator of this cool heat project, which is basically a, a super critical CO2 cycle into an industrial waste heat application. Uh, the project is funded by Horizon 2020. It's a, a budget of 18.8 million euro, of which 40 million is financed by the EU. It's 48 months. We started in June 2021. The TRL level is 5.6, the start, and basically we end at 7 with roadmaps to a TRL 9. So basically that's where we are. You see under it here the partners, which are a consortium on which contain turbo machinery, academia, and institutes. All right, the project objectives. Basically, we want to develop and demonstrate the two megawatt uh, flexible SU2 cycle based heat to power uh, with a heat source of higher than 400 degrees and an efficiency of the cycle of more than 23. In that uh, project, we also developed for sure the, uh, the cycle components like turbo machinery and heat exchangers. Uh, and we developed control system basically to uh, have a flexible operation and follow the load demand. Uh, furthermore, application, we look in six application cases uh, where we look at replication. Re we have a wide dissemination as this uh, event, I think, is one of them. Uh, and we demonstrate uh, the economics and the replication, including environmental and social acceptance. Right. 
What do we do? If you look to our cycle, basically we have a 400 degree um, exhaust heat, which comes from a cement plant. Uh, there we basically take up the heat via, via heat exchanger and then uh, we transfer the heat via uh, transfer fluid to a, a heat exchanger. Then we have the turbo machinery, which is a turbo compressor. We uh, then go from the turbo compressor or from the turbo side of the turbo compressor to the power turbine, which generates uh, uh, power, and then via recuperator and cooler go back to the compressor. That's where we are. That's the cycle. We have basically defined the nominal point. Uh, just to give you a view, 33 degrees, 85 bar. In at the compressor, out 58 degrees, 215 bar. Then we go to recuperator and heat exchanger, so the waste heat recovery unit, which then heats up the uh, the CO2 to 360 degrees with 210 bar. That goes to the turbo side of the turbo compressor, and you see that it then ends up into the generator. Oh, sorry, into the into the power and uh, the actual power uh, uh, turbine. There it's uh, brought back to 276 and then to 69 and then again cool down to 33 and go to the inlet of the compressor. That's a little bit in a fast view what we do and how we define the nominal point. This was basically also given by the constraints of the uh, exhaust gas as well as the cooling. The cooling. Uh, what is our results so far? We are one a little bit more than one year uh, on the way. You see that we have initial uh, designs of the turbo compressor as well as the uh, power turbine on the right hand side. Um, and we uh, did our feed, we concluded our feed study. So I don't know, I cannot share, I don't, I don't have the pointer. But anyway, you see on the left hand side, you see the, uh, the cement plant, and the right hand side, you see. Uh, um, a schematic view of where we are, you see on the top, which is 80 meter high, you see um, there the, uh, the weight heat recovery unit. Can I, I cannot show the point. I, can you see the pointer? Here? Yes. yes, you can see the arrow. Okay, that's good. So here you have the waste heat recovery unit. Then basically the heat which is taken here is brought by this hydraulic uh, pipe to the plant. So our uh, SU2 power cycle, which comprises the uh, compressor or the turbo compressor, the, the, the power turbine, as well as the cooling and uh, cooler and uh, the auxiliaries. So we did our feed study, which basically resulted in the fact that when we look into the integration of this cycle into this side, as it is here, we found out that the, uh, the cost exceeded far our budget. This is not because of the component itself, but it was mainly due to the integration of this cycle into the site, mainly contributed by the conceptual or the extraordinary conditions which we meet, which are height, safety as well as uh, dust into the exhaust heat and that uh, led to enormous cost uh, increase so to find a way forward we are looking now into a potential other uh, demonstration site which has a, a far easier uh, integration and provides us with additional funding a similar uh, uh, issue as solar school uh, basically met as well. So what do we need? We basically need a, an easy accessible site. We need enough footprint. We need auxiliaries, enclosure. We are looking for additional funding. I come back to that. And we need a clean and sufficient exhaust heat uh, basically to, uh, to reduce the size and cost of the waste heat recovery unit. And here on this slide, you see uh, the, 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 the exhaust mass flow on the vertical side and the horizontal side, you see the exhaust gas heat and you see the yellow part, which is the last waste heat recovery unit size, more than 2000 square meter surface. And on the right hand side, you see there the suitable work heat recovery unit size. 
So we are looking into this matter where we have basically here in the green in the green area where we are looking for our application. So what do we offer? As, I, as you have seen in the, in the, on the names, we have a strong consortium. We have a good cycle, robust cycle. We have good turbo machinery manufacturers. It's a two megawatt uh, cycle, which we identified and basically concluded. Uh, we offer to integrate it within the existing infrastructure. So within our consortium, we have the power and the EPC uh, force to do that. We will deliver basically few, uh, full technical and operational support in the uh, CO2 cycle. And we offer the uh, demo site, the, 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 the potential demo site, the exploitation of the two megawatt power cycle after the demo has ended. And this is a very uh, nice opportunity for uh, potential partners since the uh, the power plant will for sure have a huge impact to the savings. So when you think about 8,000 hours of operation and two megawatt, this could lead to 17, more than 17,000 megawatt hours exceeding the revenue of almost 3 million euro per year. And this would result then in a payback, payback time of uh, less than five years. So really a very interesting case. And we really believe that within the, 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 the environment which we are now in, given the, the, the crisis which is there, that we have a good opportunity to exploit this cycle. So we are looking forward to, to, to talk and we already have additional discussions with potential demonstration sites to continue with our project. Uh, saying that, if you are interested or want more uh, information, you find here the context uh, of our consortium. Please feel free to contact us and uh, ask your questions. Thank you for attention. Jitka. Thank you very much, Lene, for the presentation. Uh, the next one is about a project called SEO2 Effects. And it's uh, Otakar Freeboard who is coming uh, to the stage to present it. Otakar graduated from the Czech Technical University in Prague in the Power Engineering Department. Since 2012, he has been working in Research Center Rež, currently as a head of Advanced Energy Technology Department. He has more than 15 years of experience with R&D projects, and for the last 10 years, he has been focusing on the SEO2 technology. So Otakar, it's over to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Itka, for introducing myself. And I will tell you something about uh, Project SEO2 Effect, which is an abbreviation for Czech uh, name of our project. Uh, and in English, it means development of innovative systems for efficient energy storage. Okay. Uh, my presentation is of the same structure as the others, so I will skip this slide and uh, you know, let's uh, let's see some project summary. Uh, our project is funded by uh, Technological Agency of Czech Republic, uh, Toucher, and uh, also uh, by uh, by other institutional support of Ministry of uh, of Industry and Trade. And of course, as uh, the other projects, there are other own resources of the partners of the project. Uh, our total budget will be about 4 million euros. Uh, the duration of the project is 66 months and we, we should end uh, at the end of uh, 20, 2024. Uh, I estimated the starting and final TLR to four, respectively six. Uh, our project partners uh, are, I'm from the company CVR, I'm a coordinator of this project, and then our partners are Dosan Škoda Power, Inprice Systems, and uh, Nuclear Research Institute, UJV. Uh, what about objectives? Uh, as can be seen from the pro name project, uh, uh, in frame of our project, we are going to design uh, a flexible and efficient uh, storage system 
based on uh, TES system, which is thermal energy storage. So it means that uh, we will heat up uh, our storage tank uh, by uh, by electrical power, store the heat, and then uh, again uh, transform the heat back to electricity by uh, the SCO2 cycle. So uh, in frame of the project, we will uh, also uh, uh, design uh, and fabricate uh, the key components, uh, which will be verified. And you will see on the next slide uh, in which scale and which approach. Uh, and what is the main motivation? Uh, uh, currently, uh, the ener uh, energy is stored uh, using of some batteries, uh, which is uh, good for electricity. But as you all, if you know, probably uh, the technology is too expensive for uh, for high powers. And uh, another option uh, which is currently used, it's uh, heating up some tanks with uh, hot water, but uh, then uh, you can get back just the heat. So our system uh, should be a combined production of electricity and, and heat. So uh, on this slide, you can see a PID of, uh, of our system. Uh, it's quite a uh, common uh, power circuit. Uh, it's a Brighton cycle with recuperation. Uh, we have two uh, kind of compressors. The first one it's called starting compressor, and it's for just uh, startup of the system. And then there is a main compressor with uh, with its turbine, which is driven only by a turbine, not by a motor. So that's the difference. Uh, then uh, you go uh, as usual to heat exchanger. Uh, we use electrical heater to heat up uh, CO2 to 550 degrees of Celsius, which is a uh, highest temperature in the system. Uh, I, forgot to, I forgot to mention that the highest uh, pressure in the system is 25.5 uh, megapascal at the compressor outlet. And then after the heater, uh, we split the flow uh, to the compressor turbine and to the power turbine. Uh, when the, uh, the power turbine is connected with the generator uh, and should produce about one uh, megawatt electrical power. So that's a uh, short system. You can see the parameters. At this point, at the bottom pressure is uh, 8.5. Megapascal and the bottom temperature it's uh, 30 degrees of Celsius. Now we can see the 3D model of uh, of our system. It's just a part of it. Uh, it's a core of the system, but uh, the equipment around it's much larger. Uh, you can see the main compressor and the starting compressor at this point. Uh, uh, we implement it into the system, the pressurizer, which is maybe not so common, but it's also in our case also for storing of, uh, of CO2 uh, when uh, uh, when the system is shut it down. Uh, then you can see the coolers. We use the water uh, from the river for cooling. Here is uh, the power turbine. It's just this small piece. Uh, it's smaller than the valves which are needed uh, uh, to be implemented before the turbine. Uh, it is uh, placed directly on the gearbox and connected with the generator. This is the size of, of the recuperator and these are, are the electric heaters. Uh, as you could see in a previous project, uh, we also uh, had to change uh, the location uh, for for our facility. Uh, uh, originally, we planned to place it directly and operate it in our institute, uh, but finally we found out that it's not the best idea. Uh, so uh, we came in touch uh, with uh, with the uh, heating and power plant operator nearby. It's about 20 kilometers from our institute, and uh, they will provide us uh, the location for uh, for implementing of our cycle. As you can see here, the uh, the, the hall of the power block. And uh, they replaced uh, or removed uh, two turbines from that hall, and, uh, and we will have the space on, on 
this place. You can see uh, the equipment uh, which belongs uh, which belongs to our system as uh, it is feeded by uh, electricity. So there is quite a uh, large uh, electricity instrumentation and, and so on. So uh, main results. Uh, uh, it got am I <laughs> running out of yes, time? <laughs> OK, so I will tend to be tight. Uh, thank thank you. you. So uh, yeah, you could already see all the main components. One uh, one component which will be also tested. It's a mock up of the storage tank. Uh, we will use as the storage media uh, 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 melted uh, melted aluminium and uh, this tank. Uh, it's quite small, about the power of 200 kilowatts, and it will be connected and tested on our CO2 facility in our institute. Uh, and uh, options for exploitation collaboration. Uh, it's possible to test uh, the compressor and turbines of similar size uh, to the power of 1.8 1, 1 megawatt. Uh, of course, uh, that uh, we are looking uh, forward to test uh, the flexibility of the cycle or the startup procedures and so on. Uh, next steps uh, are, for example, coupling with, uh, with industrial scale uh, storage system and upgrade uh, to the compression cycle. Last comment, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, we already uh, prepared uh, the new website. Uh, it's a demo version of the website, and I hope it will be finished within uh, about 30 days, but it already works, and mainly in Czech uh, mutation, but it will be uh, also in, uh, in English mutation very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And there is the last presentation uh, ahead of us. Um, it's the um, it's my charming colleague Albani Kanyak who's coming to present. And uh, I would say uh, I apologize to all my male colleagues, but the best comes last because it's a lady, and you you, you see that even this technology has some sort of um, gender balance. I'm happy that we have at least one uh, one uh, female speaker. Um, so please let me introduce Albani. Uh, she is our R&D manager at uh, EDF for already more than 15 years. She's currently focusing on technological perspective and innovative processes. She has been working on SCO2 since 2014 and has led two European projects dedicated to this technology, SCO2 Flex and SCO2 for NPP. And this is exactly the project that you will be hearing about. Over to you, Albani. You are muted, we can hear. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Satiska. Is it okay for the slide? Yes, you see it very yes, well. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. So I will present to you uh, SC the Fine PP. So the long uh, title of the po of the project is Innovative SCO2 based heat removal technology for an increased level of safety in nuclear plants. So, um, briefly. Okay, so this is the same structure for, for that my colleagues. So uh, SCO2 for NPP uh, was, because we finished uh, last month, was a project uh, funded by the U European Union and especially for the Euratom program. So it was a, a, a three-year project from September uh, 2019 to last August. And the idea for us was to bring a technology developed before in a, a former project SEO to Hero from TRL3 to TRL5 with uh, the 11 partners of the project. So EDF, uh, Justifian Institute, UGB Civil Rights, KGNTFS, FISCRIO, Baker Hughes, uh, University of Duisburg SN, Arctic and University of Stuttgart. Uh, we want to we want you to, to, to work on this uh, topic and I will present to you what are the objectives in the impacted, uh, expected impacts of the project? So, as I say, it was to develop an innovative uh, heat removal technology. Uh, the idea was to put this heat removal technology uh, just in a nuclear plant in order to increase the safety on nuclear plant if we are in the scenario of an accident like in Fukushima and we lose 
all the uh, networks, so electricity network connection and the water connection also to uh, to cool the, the reactor building. So our vision was to, with this CO2 system, to provide some electricity for, for DK, from the DK8 to have a very modular system uh, which can be autonomous, so self-starting and self-sustaining, would can be retrofit in the existing nuclear plant like the uh, pressure in the water uh, plant and the boiler water reactor, and also could be an innovative power conversion system for the new generation of nuclear plant, Gen4, and the sm small modular reactor. This is a very simple um, cycle with uh, only a small CHX, so compact heat exchanger, a tubo compressor and uh, a DUHS, so uh, um, a neat exchanger between the SO2 cycle and the atmosphere. So the idea for us uh, was to work on this very simple uh, cycle, as I say, so very few elements, a CO2 tank uh, in order to be able to have a push-up start, so uh, an autonomous start without any uh, needs of batteries or another uh, electricity, for example, uh, the turbo machinery and uh, the, the small compact heat exchanger and some heat exchanger in order to uh, reject the heat to the atmosphere. So what we can say is that a uh, structure we obtain at the end of the project, it's a design uh, and a, a proposal architecture we have. We have at the left uh, side, the compact heat exchanger and the smart turbo compressor. And at the, in the higher part of the structure, we have the different uh, DUHS, so the heat exchanger between the, uh, the air and the SO2 cycle. Uh, the idea was for us to work at uh, only supercritical state, so monophasic state with uh, between uh, 55 degrees and uh, more than uh, 280, uh, 280 degrees and to have a very high uh, pressure, so around 120 degrees and uh, 215 degrees in order to be sure to stay at a supercritical stage. In the project, what we work uh, in addition of this uh, architecture is to also to develop and to test a small scale equipment. So, uh, the partners in the project develops uh, some prototype for the DUHS exchanger with a thin fan coolers. We also develop a prototype for the compact heat exchanger and the thermal machinery. We have uh, several uh, SEO2 loop in our disposition. So we, we had two loop in Germany, uh, one in uh, KT infrastructure and one in the uh, University of Duisburg uh, of Stuttgart. Um, university and also uh, one in Czech Republic in our partners from CVRH. And also we work in order to include this uh, system in a nuclear plant simulator in order to see uh, what is the behavior when we are in the control room and if we, we have all the characteristic and all the, uh, the, the good behavior we want to have and to, to be able to increase the same of the nuclear plant. Our main results are the following. So first, we validate the S our first uh, SO2 model in some uh, thermohydraulic code like Qatar, Athlete, and uh, a coupling of uh, Athlete and Modelica. So for that, we, we, we have a campaign test in a, a first loop in a KG infrastructure, and uh, we work as, uh, after with uh, all the uh, thermohydraulic cuts in order to be able to have a good uh, modelization of the SO2 first loop. After we specify the upscale uh, system with all the bundling condition and the simulation for uh, in an implementation in a full scale uh, nuclear plant. So we have to specify 
all the specification of the accident uh, scenario and also to proceed to some simulation of uh, up, uh, of our uh, upscale SEO2 system. We prepare also uh, a first roadmap for the licensing of the system in order to ensure compliance with uh, applicable regulation. Uh, not only nuclear regulation, but also the current regulation on turbo machinery and compact passenger dedicated to the CO2 SO2 cycle. So we have at the end of the project, we, we had uh, all the licensing and construction requirements and the roadmaps, and we design all the components, uh, the different equipments of the loop in the context of these licensing requirements. So we designed the upscale ETEX and different uh, ETEX engineer uh, with this licensing requirements. And also for the turbo compressor, we, we, we proceed like that. And it was very interesting because for these elements, we were able to make some innovation, for example, to test some gas seal uh, for the turbo compressor or to test some new design and to have a patent of a new design for the heat exchanger and, and to follow the licensing uh, requirements. Also, uh, during the last year of the project, we, we work a lot of the final design of this architecture integrated in a nuclear plant. So we draw, we draw all the scaling uh, modules integrating and uh, so coupling with, with the nuclear plant. We integrate the loop in a, a nuclear plant simulator without negatively interfering in the ex existing safety and the operation system. And we prepare all the technical, regulatory and financial and organizational roadmaps in order to bring the technology to the market. And now it is my last slide. As the project is finished, we, we are just uh, working on the instruction of a follow-up project in order to see if we can improve the integration of the new startup and operating procedure, and also to improve some performance of the main equipment, and also to open the system to other uh, applications like industrial heat recovery and uh, improve the flexibility and the performance in addition to the reliability. So uh, this is the main website of the project and uh, you can contact me also if you have some question. So we can see that um, that the most uh, popular topic uh, is SU2 component challenges and I don't see anyone uh, actually ranking anymore or typing the, the answer so i think that uh, we can we can keep the answers like this thank you very much for uh, for the answer to to this very last slido and let me also thank you for your participation for your engagement during uh, all the discussions we had during uh, also the, the chats that you participated in and also also the all the slidos we hope that uh, the, the webinar um, was able to answer your expectations and uh, we are very much hoping to see you again we are apologizing for a slight delay that was mainly caused by our technical difficulties at the beginning uh, we will be stronger next time and we will make sure that this will not happen anymore so for all the team that wasn't even present uh, in its entirety today, we haven't seen all the people who are all behind um, uh, behind the scenes. I wish you a very nice afternoon. And again, thank you very much for your participation.